Okay. CNS infections in critical care is the topic right now and I would say that it is one of the most important topics in critical care medicine as well as a very challenging topic in infectious diseases. Uh, it can be affected, the CNS can be affected by a variety of organisms including bacteria, viruses, mycobacteria, fungi, protozoa and even helminths. And it is a really a very high consequence situation although it is relatively low in, in its incidence and therefore it is not surprising that RCTs or randomized control trials for assessing diagnostic as well as therapeutic modalities have not been done and possibly cannot be performed and the evidence for specific treatment approaches is relatively sparse. Also I must tell you that the treatment is heavily dependent on lo local epidemiology, local practices and so on. So I will confine my remarks today to syndromes which include acute and chronic bacterial meningitis, viral meningitis, encephalitis, focal infections in the brain such as brain abscesses and so on and post traumatic, post neurosurgical and shunt related infections which are forming an important part of the ICU mix of cases. Definitions quickly, meningitis is simply the inflammation of the meninges. And it is not surprising at all that the signs and symptoms of meningeal irritation will dominate the clinical picture and come up very, very early. On the other hand, encephalitis is inflammation of the brain parenchyma. And so, again not surprising that neurologic dysfunction is the most early symptom in this disease. Encephalopathy is altered mental status generally without inflammation of brain tissue and it has different systemic causes. Unfortunately, there is a huge overlap between encephalitis, meningitis and encephalopathy, although the definitions appear to be so watertight. So for the clinician, it becomes very difficult at times to distinguish one from the other. There are also other confounding variables. Sometimes the inflammatory response in the brain or in the meninges may be less prominent and that may be have something to do with the immunocompromised state of the host and so on. And sometimes fever could be due to systemic infection which can also add to the diagnostic difficulty. Now the initial empiric antimicrobial depends upon evaluation of what might be predisposing factors in that particular host and which will obviously determine the etiology. Also the clinician must keep in mind what out of all these are treatable causes. Similarly source control which is always talked about in all serious infections, it is not always possible even in cases of focal infections such as brain abscess due to the critical location of the brain lesion. Finally antimicrobial distribution into the CNS is influenced by many many factors both physical as well as inherent physico chemical properties of the antimicrobial itself.